Frankfurt American Alumni Radio. Thousands protest at U.S. Air Force Base in Germany against drones. Several thousand demonstrators formed a human chain along the perimeter of a U.S. Air Force Base in southwest Germany. This location has to uh, be most certainly in Ramstein, yeah. It's in Ramstein, right outside of K-Town in Messenbach, Germany. My name is Otis Q. Pate here on the Frankfurt American Alumni Radio Show, Germany. And I'm touching base with you today with a news article from Oliver Ditze, last name spelled D-I-E. T-Z-E. This article also comes to us and is being provided by NBC.com and also the, its original source, which is Reuters.com. Thousands protests at U.S. Air Force Base in Germany against drones. Several thousand demonstrators formed a human chain along the perimeter of a U.S. Air Force base in southwest Germany on Saturday, which was a few weeks ago on June 11th, in protest against drone operations by the United States. The demonstration was organized by the alliance, quote unquote, stop Ramstein, no drone war which says the Ramstein base transmits information between operators in the United States and unmanned drone aircraft in places such as Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Yemen, and Syria. Police estimated 3,000 through 4,000 people had formed the chain, and that's a human chain, close to the base. And this base serves as the headquarters for the U.S. Air Force in Europe. Organizers spoke of 5,000 to 7,000 people who were in attendance and also forming this human chain. No comment was available, however, on the particular day of the chain forming by the protesters, the thousands of protesters, and that was according to officials of Ramstein Messenbach. The U.S., or should I say, the use of drones by the U.S. is highly controversial in Germany, where an aversion to military conflict has prevailed since World War II. Organizers say allowing data for drone deployments to be routed through Ramstein goes against the German constitution and want the base satellite relay station to be closed. Nearly 15 years after a drone first fired missiles in combat, the U.S. military began to start their program and has expanded to become an everyday part of the war machine for carrying out surveillance and launching strikes. 
President Barack Obama back in May approved a drone strike in a remote area of Pakistan that killed Taliban leader Mullah Akhtar Mansour. U.S. officials said he had been overseeing plans for new attacks on U.S. targets in Kabul. And Kabul is in the country of Iraq. Critics say drones often miss their intended targets, can only partly relay what is happening on the ground and encourages warfare with impunity waged by people at computer screens far from danger. Thousands protest at U.S. Air Force Base in Germany against drones. Again, this location is right outside of K-Town, Germany, also known as Kaiserslautern more properly. This article comes from us from Oliver Ditze, last name spelled D-I-T-Z-E. Just as a reminder, this article was from a few weeks ago, uh, published on June 11th. I find this article very interesting and uh, primarily because I am here in Germany and I'm able to firsthand see how the evolution of relationships between Germans and American forces, Air Force, Army, Marines, I can see firsthand how it's happening, how things are evolving, how things are starting to present themselves as a new paradigm. And I must say, I'm not surprised at all that this situation is ongoing. And by the way, when you look at the pictures uh, that's online, the different images of this situation, you'll see that at least 60% of the protesters out there, out of, what do they say? They, uh, uh, let's just say there's at least 6,000 protesters out there forming a human chain, and most of these people forming this human chain are youngsters. Meaning, in my expression, that they are about 30 years old on down to 18, 17, 16, etc. Youngsters. Certainly, I would say at least 60%. And I looked at quite a bit of pictures. I would say I looked at at least 50 different pictures concerning this incident, perhaps 40, somewhere like that. But it was quite a bit of them. And uh, I, that's what I, I noticed and. I thought, wow, this new generation is most certainly very much about being activists in the realm of promoting peace. And I'm not surprised about that at all as well, because, uh, you know, the U.S. forces first came to Germany around 1945. That's when the U.S. forces settled here in Germany during the conclusion of the Second World War. And for those who may not know, and for those who don't mind it being rehashed, the U.S. and England and other members came to Germany to uh, dethrone Adolf Hitler during the Second World War, concluding with having Adolf Hitler dethroned, of course, and also we remained in Germany, our U.S. forces remained in Germany for about the next 45, 50 years, 50 years, up until 1989, when the Berlin Wall came down. But the U.S. forces were in Germany for all of that time protecting Germans from the Russians, 
that's what we were in the country for. And my parents also served back then. That's how I originally came to Germany. And so I'm not surprised at all that um, these situations are now starting to evolve and change into something else because there is uh, a new generation, if not almost two. I think a generation is like at least every 18 years. So with that in mind, and also included in, in, in that summation, that uh, the wall, Berlin Wall, came down in 1989. Shoot, children that were born in eight, uh, 1989 or 1990, they don't even know anything about that. Unless, I mean, except for learning it in school, but they don't know anything about that particular mindset that um, was very much a part of that era of World War II and, you know, post-World World War II, most certainly for many decades afterwards. But, you know, 1945 up to 1989, what's that's 44 years that the U.S. forces remained in Germany to promote peace and to uh, keep the German people safe and, of course, to protect our foreign investments. But these children that are born, like let's say in 1989, up until this point here in uh, 2016, it's it's really like not surprising at all. I mean, it's that's uh, what 27 years since the wall came down, as of this broadcast. So, children that were born even up until when the wall came down in 1989, the fall, in fall of 1989, I think it was around November or something like that, October, some sometime during that part of the year, children born back then or young adults born back then, they are a totally different mindset, totally different uh, energy and vibe. And so, again, I'm, I'm not surprised that there's thousands of protests or thousands at the protests um, that are being held from time to time. This is not the only one that has been held, by the way. There's been others back in 2013. So you're seeing this uh, trend by the youngsters to, to become very much uh, a norm. Um, and again, I certainly know that this uh, will increase as time goes on and will get much more serious because uh, these youngsters are very much about that piece. And uh, I have to say that's a fantastic thing and I do support it, you know. I'm Otis Cupe here on Frankfurt American Alumni Radio. Dropping to you a little news here today, here in July. It's uh, 86 degrees here in the city, and we're going to have some more 80-degree days coming up, so things are feeling real nice here in July.
It's all up to you, my friend. Choose wisely and in a way precisely. Uh huh. Now my son has said that lifted his crutch like a pump gun. I'm gonna make this call right now. So get the fuck out of my son. Double A R, Frankfurt Alumni Radio here on this very lovely day in July 2016, and uh, that was a very smooth, unique jam from Wise Man's Dub. And the artist that put that together is called Dub One. Dub One, or is it? Well, let me spell it for you. D-U-B-E-O-N-E. And we like to say we much appreciate it to Wise Man Dub to allow Frankfurt American Alumni Radio to present their songs. Kudos to you. Frankfurt American Alumni Radio. One of the things that I learned through this article, and I keep looking at this particular place on this article where it says the use of drones is highly controversial in Germany where an aversion to military conflict has prevailed since World War II and where it says organizers say allowing data for drone deployments to be routed through Ramstein goes against the German constitution goes against the German constitution and they want the base's satellite relay station to be closed. find that very interesting that it goes against the German constitution about these drones because in our country, drones are all so popular. Even children are, children are able to have drones that uh, have video uh, recording capabilities or slots or areas on the drone where you can put your cell phone and 
it record while it's flying high from up above. I have to also say on that note that in Germany here, I have not seen anyone out in the parks or in the city, you know, on the banks of the main river flying their drone. Not that I would uh, be alarmed or anything like that, but considering and comparing to how popular drones have become seemingly to me, at least in the United States, how popular they have become. I am surprised that there are not those here in at least a noticeable amount to where I could also see drones be used here in you know, the popularity starting to gather favor because Germans often pick up on the trends and the different uh, ongoings, I'll say, from the United States. Because since our troops were here from 1945 up until 1989 in heavy force and most certainly up in 2005, up until 2005, because that's when Rhineman Air Base closed down right outside of Frankfurt. During that span of time, Germans got very much used to the way that we Americans do things and the different toys and things like that, you know, that we have, as well as music and movies and all that type of stuff. And for the most part, that has not changed in this is what has me thinking about why aren't drones popular over here. But when I consider this article and that uh, even drones for the military goes against their against Germans constitution. Well, I can see why that's not something that's popular over here, you know, because it at the very least starts to condition people to do things that are against the constitution. Thousands protesting. It's getting larger. This particular Protest out in Ramstein Messenbach, which connects to K Town. It's about uh, an hour south of Frankfurt. These are getting much more populated, as I alluded to earlier. Back in 2013, there were a protest or two having to do with the military here, the U.S. military here in Germany. So I would even say that uh, time is very limited to how much longer our military will be in Germany. And I have to say, well, I'm not surprised at that, but uh, I wish there was more benefits that came out of our trillions of dollars of spending, us protecting the country from the Russians and also saving the country from Adolf Hitler. I wish there were more benefits that U.S. citizens were able to exercise as a result of such fantastic feats that were accomplished for the country that has helped the country be whatever, what it is and whatever you would like to think of it is today, which is a very comfortable, peaceful powerhouse as far as economically. But uh, it's very strange how we citizens of America have no benefits at all. I mean, when we come to the country, we have to, you know, register immediately and we're not even able to stay in the country longer than three months at a time. Um, and it's six months during the course of a year if you're not a legal resident in the country. And I find that very, very interesting that Americans have no additional assets or no additional gratuities when we're here. Well, in my opinion, you know, if I if it was up to me, Americans would be able to come to Germany and stay in Germany um, as long as they'd like to stay in Germany. Like those are able to do who are part of the European Union. Those that are in the European Union for example, France and Germany, those are those that are from France can come to Germany and live and get a job and 
course, they have to go and register where they live because the authorities need to know where you're at and you need to prove that you're staying someplace so you can get a bank account and a driver's license and whatever else you might need. But um, they don't have to go through the same citizenship or registration um, paperwork and, you know, things like that in order to be here in the country. They don't have to worry about being here over three months or six months or a year or what have you. If they have a place to stay and then, and that type of stuff, um, well, they can be here. They don't have to leave and, and then come back after a certain amount of time. I think you have to leave. Uh, if you're here for three months, you have to leave for six months before you can return. Um, and that leads to uh, what I was saying earlier about Americans can only be in country six months out of the year if you're not a normal resident. Isn't that something? Well, it is to me, um, especially when I consider that my grandfather also was a U.S. soldier who protected, who helped protect and who helped gain control to later be able to turn it back over to the Germans so they can get their country back. My grandfather helped back in the Second World War to that ends of, of achievement my parents were also in the army that also that was a part of that operation as well to get germany in the realm of being sovereign and uh so the country could also build up and you know be the powerhouse that it is today my parents are also a part of that so i feel like you know we americans should have a, a bit more gratitude shown to us as a result of that, I think there should be many more little favors that we should be able to exercise. I don't know. What do you think about that? Please feel free to leave your comments in uh, the info or the comment section underneath the uh, upload. We really appreciate it and really like reading the things that you write and we appreciate it a lot. Kiss me, baby, my head's a little hazy, but you know we'll be back soon. Be back soon. Be back soon. Be back soon. Listen to the music moving through the crowd.
Frankfurt American Alumni Radio, keeping you in touch with your German home away from home. And, uh, you know, this is a retroactive and we also like to say a present day topic station, a present day topic broadcast that we are trying to get in the niche of providing. Coming up with different type of topics and letting you know what's going on over here in your German home away from home. Today, I've been elaborating on the topic of thousands protesting outside of Ramstein Messenbach, Germany, down by Kaiserslaut in Germany. Now, that's something that we never heard of back in the day of uh, the U.S. Milcom being active and all that stuff back in the day. But times do change. And uh, I know as we get Further away from 1989, when the Berlin Wall came down, 27 years ago, the further we get away from that and the more that the youngsters, the the other generation, Generation Y, I I believe that's what's going on now. We have Generation Y because I know that I'm a part of Generation X. So we have Generation uh, Y and then we have the Millennials that were born uh, post 2000. I'm not exactly sure in there, but as they get older, I'm sure that these uh, topics referring to protesting and things like that to get military, our U.S. military out of the country, I'm sure that it's going to grow. All things come to an end uh, at some point or at least have to be modified, and that's exactly what's going on here. But uh, I have to say that I'm very proud of what we have accomplished over here in all the years. And Germany has turned out to be a fantastic country post-World War II, post-Adolf Hitler, post all that trouble that Germany was in, even in World War I. If you look into German history, it's very tantalizingly full of strife and bloodshed and I have to say I think that's one of the reasons why the country is doing so well now they've learned very valuable lessons through war those are the positives those are the pluses that came out of that era for them in my opinion I haven't actually talked to any German about that especially an elder you know, one that's in their 60s, 70s, a German man or woman in their 60s, 70s, 80s, or what have you. Very interesting. I think I will do that at my nearest opportunity. It's talk to an elder German to see what they think about Germany since the wall came down in 1989. Maybe even get an uh, a, a, uh, <laughs> interview with one of them or something like that and have Lenny on the show. The other Frankfurt Millcom member and co-host of Frankfurt Alumni Radio, Lenny, she speaks very, very fluent German, much better than mine. She was actually born in 97th General Hospital here in Frankfurt. And uh, if I was uh, on my P's and Q's and crossing my T's and dotting my I's, I may just be able to get her to help in an interview like that. We could actually do an interview just an interview just like that over uh, Spreaker.com, which I'm broadcasting live from right now. Spreaker.com slash Ride Eagle Air from the live console here on Spreaker.com. But Lin, Lenny might be able to go ahead and do that. And Lenny is an eagle, by the way. She used to also go to Frankfurt American High School like I used to go to Frankfurt American High School and. If you've listened to past shows, you know I often bring that up because uh, that's the whole energy and connection that I have to everything. Because back then I was in the youth and we were very much back in those days in the 80s. 
we were very much about change too. We didn't like the things that had been going on in the world. And you know, I, I was a, a youngster during the flower power era and all that type of stuff, uh, when the Vietnam War was going on in our country. And I saw the impact that it had on family members and extended family and on different veterans in our country and stuff. And by the time I got aware of all of these things when, and was able to verbalize my opinion and move on my opinions and become proactive, you know, when I was a teenager, I was very much about change, getting getting war and all of that type of stuff and bloodshed and strife and dismay and all that out of the way, erasing all of that, getting rid of it, especially when it is not for protection of a country. So I'm not surprised that this Generation Y nor the millennials are taking part in these human chains outside of uh, the military base especially when it's something that goes against their constitution. And uh, we're going to see what's going to happen um, as time goes on. I'll do my best to uh, bring you articles um, a bit more swiftly than this particular article. But I stumbled on this article, although I did hear here in Germany, I heard about the situation taking place, but there is so much news that just goes on and on and on on the mainstream level. It's just very, very difficult at best to remember all of the articles. I even write articles down. I write down many things so I can uh, provide them in the show. But uh, sometimes things just get lost in the shuffle on, in one way or another. However, I think that this article is something that can be used in the very near future within the next year while monitoring the relationship between Germany and our country. My name is Otis Q. Pate here on the Frankfurt American Alumni Radio Show in Germany, broadcasting from Sachsenhausen here in south of the city. And I'd like to thank you for stopping by and tuning in and would also be very thankful, Lenny and I, the co-host, if you would just go ahead and uh, make our destination a place where you look forward to stopping to and stopping through in the near future because we're going to be putting up more shows and more concepts and you know uh, we're going to even be broadcasting live and having a chat room and uh, a phone line well you know if uh, the interests of you and yours and everyone permits Frankfurt American Alumni Radio bringing you your German home away from home and I just like to say take care